making this up, okay? I'm making this up. But then all the quilting is kind of pretty hidden. Hello and welcome back to my channel. This week I'm starting Christmas gift sewing. And the first thing I want to make is some tote bags for friends of mine. I had a really long think about how I wanted to do this and last Christmas, actually it'll be the Christmas of 2019, I started making uh, a quilt for my grandma who lives in Belgium and obviously 2020 happened and I don't need to explain what that's all about but it meant that I couldn't travel to Europe and I don't know if anyone's ever tried to post anything to Europe but it's damn expensive and it's expensive if it's an entire quilt that's maybe queen size and maybe very big because you're Helen and you overextend yourself every time. All that long story to say that I now have this quilt and I haven't actually quilted it completely. I didn't finish it because I started sort of thinking about how long it would be until I saw her and she's quite old. She's in her 90s and she's not in the best of health anymore. Um, she's kind of losing her memory and yeah, anyway, I don't need to go into that. But point being, I have this quilt and I'm not going to be able to travel to Europe anytime soon and there's things about this quilt because it was the first quilt I'd ever made that I would like to do better if I'm gonna make her a gift because she's a very experienced sewing crafting lady and I just want to do it justice I want to make her something nice so what I thought is I will recycle this quilt because I kind of don't really know what to do with it um, and make tote bags out of it I don't want to waste it and I made that quilted pouch a few videos back and I kind of liked the effect that, that had quilting the fabric and how it made the pouch kind of stiff and solid. Yeah, I think I'm going to recycle this to make tote bags for my friends. If you're my friend and you get a tote bag, just know there is so much love in it and I'm really excited to give it new life and to take it out of my dusty cupboard. and. <laughs> make some gifts for people but yeah this one's extra special first thing i did wrong was i basted it outside because it's so big but i did it on grass which means the back of it is really wrinkly right like mega wrinkly and i think on the inside of the bag you won't be able to see that so that's my plan with that but yeah basically this is the quilt so it's kind of a bunch of, I can't even remember. I got these squares from a set somewhere online. It was so long ago. I honestly couldn't tell you, I honestly couldn't tell you where they're from. I didn't kind of make it with the intention of telling anyone about it. So it was just a labor of love. Nothing really that I needed to remember. It just has a bunch of little flowery bits like this one's sort of a squarey line pattern. This one's really floral again. This one's like circles. The lines again, but in a slightly different color. The colors again, but uh, the flowers again, but in a slightly different color. And then that just kind of repeats throughout the whole thing. We got some leaves and a couple other patterns in that same floral, but in like a greeny yellow instead. Anyway, my plan is to cut this. I know, cut it. It makes me nervous. Um, I cut this into four panels for a side of the tote bag. So a single tote bag side will be these four panels together. So I'm going to cut them all around and not worry about like the batting or whatever. Just cut them as close to the seam as I can. I'm planning on staying in the color grouping. So we've got like the pinks and purples and then like greens and blues and then into yellows and greys and stuff like that. I may end up using just calico for the strap. I may end up like doing those straps that start at like the bottom of the bag so it kind of looks more cohesive. I'm not really sure but I know that I can start with four squares, one panel, two panels per bag. So that's the plan. Hopefully it works. First, I need to get into something comfortable because as Rachel Maxey would say, I'm about to become a floor troll because there's no way this quilt fits on my desk. So 
I will see you on the ground in something comfortable so that my back doesn't hate me. Okay, uh, ignore mess. I had to move a lot of stuff to get this on the ground. So now we're just gonna do it. We're gonna grow some balls and cut into the quilt. I'm scared. <sighs> okay, so like, theoretically, this, oh, can you even see that? No. Uh, okay, so theoretically, this is like one panel, these four, and like this is one panel, etc., etc. I'm just explaining it because I don't want to cut it. <laughs> uh, okay, um, we're just gonna do it. We're just gonna do it. Make grandma another quilt. Didn't take very long to get to this point. And like, we didn't even sew it well. What the hell is this? Oh, that's so funny. That better be in the middle. Oh shit, that's in the middle of the quilt. Oh, I'm so... Okay. Another reason, I just did a shit job. I did a shit job and I need to do it again. So I shouldn't feel bad cutting into it because I did a shit job. Okay. All right. I need a bigger house. Well, there's no going back now. I love how I'm assuming that I actually sewed these together straight. Like this is the guiding rule I have. Just follow the stitching of the previous shitty time I made this quilt. I feel like this decision is going to bite me in the ass. Ugh, I'm old. uneven like what was I thinking she's like great and I'm just I did a terrible job oh well I feel like I make it look better I don't know what I'm gonna do with this piece but we'll figure it out I realized my head was out of shot for that entire thing quality YouTube Okay, so I debated potentially like trying to get rid of these bubbles. I don't know, some of them are pretty big and they like warp the back of the thing. I'm wondering if I just like iron it really well, how much that'll help. Let me try that, I'll come back. Okay, it marginally helped, so I went and did that for all of them. I'm just gonna trim like the edges of these so that there's like no excess and then align each square together and just make sure that they're the same size and I've decided I'm probably gonna put lining on the inside of this I just can't some of the wrinkles are re really bad so I'm just gonna quilt it see what it looks like but probably make a lining okay well, let's go do that <laughs> should start with the one I like the least that way if I make a mistake it's not in every single one let's do that let's that sounds like a very smart decision okay the problem is I like all of them so we're gonna start with the most wrinkly as you can see did a shit job and that's after ironing it I don't know I think I was just rushing sounds like a hell of a thing to do rush things I was gonna hand quilt this entire thing. Look, I started hand quilting. I think I did two squares and then I was like, well, they make this look easier in the videos than in real life. It takes literally forever. So I will be machine quilting this one. But if it's a square that has the hand one on there, I'm just gonna leave it. So it's gonna be part of it. There's some that have like a mystery love heart. That'd be really cool. I'm not gonna make any more, but the ones that has it, they'll be nice. I even had a hole in it. What the hell? I was gonna give this to my grandma with a hole in it. Worst grandchild ever. Seriously? Wait. These should be right sides facing. I'm making this up, okay? I'm making this up. I'm just doing random things. 
hoping that it makes some kind of thing. Okay, the dumb idiot has remembered that we need to quilt these. So, what I'm thinking is, inch wide seems like a bit much, but also could look really cute. Maybe even like two inches. Yeah, maybe every two inches. Let's do that. Every two inches, because we don't want to be here all day. Uh, so we're gonna mark every two inches and then every two inches, sorry, every two inches horizontally and every two inches vertically. And then I'm gonna draw a line because I cannot sew straight to save my life. And then we're gonna see where that goes. And I'll check back in when I've quilted this square. It's gonna take a while. <laughs> okay, I chickened out and used a panel off that long section um, to test because I didn't wanna ruin the actual bag pieces that I was gonna use. So only I could draw guidelines and still have uneven lines. It's just a skill, it's a skill of mine. Uh, other than that, it works great. So we're gonna go with chalk to mark it because I tried some other things and they did not work. Uh, they wouldn't wash out basically. I need to find a good marking pen. So if you have any recommendations, please do comment them down below. Um, but yeah, marking with chalk, a two inch grid, old overlocking thread in a jar because I don't want to use up all my really good thread. What I'm going to do is quilt all the squares, wash them, dry them, iron them, and then come back. So I'll have all my bags, all my bags, one bag, all my bags quilted at least and washed and ironed, maybe not attached, uh, all the squares quilted and ironed. And then, then I will figure out the strap situation in the meantime. I think that's the plan. That's, that's the plan go. For you it's like two seconds, for me it's like probably a week of work. <laughs> for the linings of my bags, I'm gonna be using various scrap slash recycled bits of fabric that match the fabric color on the outside. So for this greeny blue mix, I'm gonna use this old wrap skirt that I have for this dress, which is more <laughs> dress. For this bag, which is more of like a yellow gray tone, but mostly overridingly yellow, I'm gonna be using this section of remnant for my fabric stash. I made a jumpsuit with this a little while ago and I'm going to use some of it to make the lining. I may end up changing this one just because this piece probably has enough in it to make like a blouse or something a little bit bigger. So I'd rather use it for that because um, that'll be a better use of the piece of fabric. But I'm gonna see what I have in my stash and see what else I can pull together to make a yellowish lining. And then the last bag that I haven't made yet, I'm gonna use this skirt that I thrifted. I've cut pieces out of this as I've made other things. Um, and so it's not a usable skirt anymore. However, I really love this red lush color and I think it'd be great for a lining for this. It's not big enough to make anything else out of, uh, maybe a blouse, but it's quite like rough textured fabric so it's not really appropriate for a top but um that's gonna go with this kind of ready pink panels that I've got and yeah I'm gonna make these now I'll probably start with this red one and the blue one because I know for sure that that's the lining I want to use and for the yellow one I'll just revisit it a little bit later and see what happens I have a couple of other types of fabrics that I kind of might want to get rid of a little bit more than this lovely brown that I have. The first thing I'm going to do is cut two pieces of red the same size as the panels for the outside of the bag.
seems when I made this bag I didn't feel much like talking so voice over Helen it is. I made the bag by sewing the quilted panels right sides facing and boxing out the corners to the point where they were 15 centimeters wide and then repeating the process on the lining but leaving a little gap so that I could turn the bag out through the hole. I then created the straps, added those into each section and then sewed the lining right sides facing to the bag and popped it all out of the lining hole. Or at least that was the intention. Alrighty, well, that's the bag. I've boxed out the corners. So this is the outer shell. It's looking pretty good. And now I'll go ahead and prep the lining and make some straps and then we can attach them all together. Yeah, it's coming along nicely. It's kind of hard to get the things exactly aligned, but I feel like it's okay. It won't affect like the usability or anything of the bag. And within all the quilting, it's kind of pretty hidden. So, so I don't feel too bad about it. All right, uh, let's switch up the thread to a red color and prep the lining. Okay. For the lining, I want to do something a little different. I've taken this piece of the skirt fabric, um, even with the seam, doesn't really matter because it's going to be on the inside. And I'm going to press in the three corners. Luckily, the side's already kind of done because it was a hem. And then I'm going to put this as a pocket on the inside of the lining. So I'm going to prep the lining and do that. And then we can move on to putting the two pieces together. Alexander Garshaw's father, Sonny, was horrified when he heard that Moira Anderson was missing. Alexander had been quickly released on bail. So I've gone ahead and put on the pocket, and it's a little wobbly, but you know, it's on the inside, and I don't think it's too bad. Who had overseen the original investigation into Moira Anderson's disappearance? straps okay I guess I'll start with making them and then I'll just unpick the spot where they're gonna be I'm gonna top stitch around it anyway so oh that's annoying <laughs> 